Uh, okay, so basically invent, uh, we connect and protect. That's kind of our, our tagline. Uh, these days we uh, we were we were formerly uh, Pentair uh, at one time, and Pentair actually spun us off into uh, into Invent after they separated what they consider to be their water divisions and electrical divisions. Um, so you can go to the next slide. Uh, basically, our capabilities do span the globe, and I think it's just important to to point that out in case you have any. Uh, any type of global projects that we do have great interaction with our offices, uh, whether it's Asia or Europe or anywhere else. So we can certainly tackle any of the larger projects that you have and have, you know, good communication uh, across, you know, whether it's states or whether it's countries. So I just kind of wanted to, to bring that up in addition to our sales offices and distribution centers. So next slide. So uh, basically what Invent breaks down into is three separate divisions. Um, we have enclosures, which is the Hoffman, which many of you I'm sure are familiar with, as well as Schroff. Uh, we are thermal management, which is the Raychem, Tracer, New Heat, and Pyrotechnics. Um, and then there's the electrical and fastening solutions, which is our Caddy and Erico. So those are the three divisions that essentially make up uh, Invent. And altogether, we're about, a, year in, year out, about a $2 billion uh, company in revenue, uh, also traded on the New York Stock Exchange under the uh, symbols NVT. Next slide. Um, so basically how we break our business down is into uh, various uh, verticals. So really what we're focused on with Invent Thermal is, uh, well, actually with all of our divisions, is energy, uh, clearly industrial, uh, infrastructure, uh, as well as residential and commercial. Next slide. For the thermal management, as I mentioned before, um, Invent, Raycam is probably the most popular brand um, within this group, and that has all of our, our self-regulating cables, uh, our controllers, <coughs> and uh, self-limiting uh, cables as well. Uh, Invent Tracer is the non-union uh, labor arm of, uh, of the thermal management group. That's where we provide uh, turnkey installations for all of our packages as well. That includes, uh, you know, both heat trace installation as well as uh, insulation and power distribution. Uh, New Heat is our floor warming brand that we offer to residential as well as commercial uh, customers. And Pyro 10X is our um, brand of MI cables that's both for heating as well as for fire rated wiring applications. So that's really the breakdown of, uh, of thermal management. We are primarily industrial and you could go to the next slide. <clears throat> and uh, really what we're what what thermal management is broken down to it's it's two separate groups. It's the industrial heating solutions and the building and infrastructure solutions and the uh, BIS is really our commercial side. So in the industrial side of things, uh, it's the heat tracing and the wiring, control and monitoring, uh, clearly the engineering services that go along with all of that, and then the verticals that we serve, which are oil and gas, uh, power, and then any other general industry, whether it be um, you know, pharma, uh, parts of food and beverage, engineering, OEMs, that kind of thing. Uh, building and infrastructure, uh, our product groups there, our pipe tracing as well, uh, all of the snow melting and de-icing applications, and that's where the new heat floor warming falls into. So their vertical groups are, are commercial, uh, residential, and then, and then infrastructure. So that's really the basic breakdown of thermal management. It's the, uh, it's the uh, commercial and the industrial, and what AC controls and what I work in is the, uh, the industrial line. So next slide. Uh, I think I'm gonna I'm going to turn it over now to uh, to Chad Landry. That was the end of the sales portion. Uh, <laughs> hope that wasn't I hope that wasn't too much for all of you. So I tried to scale it back, just give you a little bit of background on the company, and I think Chad's going to touch on a little bit of our heat tracing as well as the design. So so thanks. <laughs> Good job, Bill. I know that was very hard. <laughs> so, I I kept it brief. Sweet, short and sweet. I love That's it. That's right. So we're going to get into the meat of what we're what we're talking about. So, you know, mainly, you know, we, we want to learn how to use TraceCalc um, and just just an overview of what TraceCalc is. It, it's basically 
um, uh, software. It's a proprietary software that Invent uh, developed, and uh, we can get simple calculations out of it. So things like heat loss, uh, the number of circuits, uh, electrical data, you know, startup, steady states, power, um, temperature data, uh, and then obviously heater cable selection and then component selection that goes with the particular type of heating cable. Um, you know, and the other good thing about TraceCal is once you get the, the, the uh, design set up, uh, it's easy to generate building materials, uh, load lists, insulation type reports uh, from the information that's in there. So, uh, you know, once you get it set up, it's real easy to get these, uh, these reports. This is kind of what the interface looks like uh, when you open it uh, and set up a project. Um, you know, on this side, you've got, you know, it's, it's Windows based, so it's 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 real simple to navigate. Uh, things like right click in the mouse, you know, uh, on these things, pull up menus. Uh, you know, you can go to the top, the files, the edits, pull down, drop down menus, and then here's some quick quick buttons uh, just for things, you know, uh, just, just real quick that you use often. Uh, on this side is the design pane. So, you know, this is where we're setting up our circuit and building our circuit. Um, over here are the parameters uh, and the design information that you put in to basically generate uh, the design. So there's several tabs across the top. You can see it's just like folders. Again, you know, Windows based. So uh, there's different folders for different parameters to, to set up. And then down here is is your calculation field. Uh, so, you know, once you gen once you um, put in all your parameters, kind of generate your circuits, here's where the calculations will pull up. Um, you know, just getting a little bit more specific um, in the explore pane right here, this is where we're going to build our piping. So, you know, in this case, we'll, we'll go through some examples. I've got some um, basic, basic, you know, slideshow examples, but we're going to actually pull up the software and use it. So. Um, so just bear with me, you know, we'll, we'll probably repeat a lot of this stuff, but uh, this is where you would go to create a new line, uh, a new segment uh, to design. Um, so when we're building our circuits um, in TraceCalc, uh, there's things like root uh, circuits. Um, let's say you want to power two things in parallel, maybe an instrument or something you want to put on the same circuit so you can build power in parallel. Uh, you can do power splices. Um, you, you know, all these things are available uh, when you're building the circuit. Uh, this is kind of color coded, so it kind of tells you what the different, um, you know, designs and how you set it up. What, it, what does it do? What does it mean? So you can see this blue right here. Um, kind of when you set it up as a parent line, it's going to generate a full bill of material with power box, uh, cable type, and in seal. Uh, if I do power parallel, you can see that it's going to include the power connections in the bill of material, um, and it's going to include an in seal. So, you know, the, the picture itself is kind of explanatory of, of what, uh, what your bill of material is going to look like, and that's the importance of setting it up, you know, these ways when you're building your circuit. Uh, so here's the uh, basic tab. So, you know, I said these look like folders and windows. So you can go across the top and you would click on each one of these to, to insert the parameters. So this is this is what we call the basic tab. Um, this is right here. Uh, you could you could call it, you know, whatever circuit you want. Um, this is where you put that information. A lot of times I'll call them something descriptive. M maybe I'll call it eight inch safety shower or uh, you know, sometimes when we're highlighting PNIDs for our scope, we'll highlight it in different colors. And so we'll put two inch pipe, you know, pink or blue or whatever, you know, it's highlighted on the PNIDs. And that's kind of how we associate our trace calc files with our actual scope. Um, so, you know, you can be creative here. You can put line numbers, uh, you know, if that's what you want to do. Uh, sometimes we just do examples, you know, we'll, we'll put Maybe we want two designs and I'll use uh, a three inch pipe and I'll use mineral wool and I'll put three inch mineral wool, you know, so so you can get pretty, pretty creative in this field. Uh, here's all our pipe parameters. So this is where we're going to select pipe types. Um, you know, this is a drop down menu. Um, so, you know, there's there's all the different types of pipe, copper, plastic, PVC, uh, stainless steel. Uh, there's different thicknesses, obviously. So schedule 40, schedule 80. So this is where you would put your pipe type. This, these three dots here is if, if there's not 
uh, a, a preset value that you're looking for, you could actually go and create your own pipe type. So you could get a cut sheet and go and enter your own um, your own pipe type if, if you need it. Uh, this is the, the diameter of the pipe. So this is, you know, the different sizes in the circuit that you're going to be building. Here's footage, which would be pipe length. Um, and I'll talk about this a little later. Uh, this max, con max contact temp is for uh, mainly when we're using PVC. So, you know, we, we get into sheet temperature issues and ratings of pipes. And, and you know, when you, when you select PVC, you know, the, the program will keep you from designing a cable that's too hot. So obviously we want to put a cable that's not going to melt the, the PVC pipe. So here's a, a field when you select PVC that'll give you to make sure that your contact temperature with the cable on the PVC pipe is not, you know, exceeding the value of the, or the reading of the pipe. Um, so I'll go through these. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time here, but you know, this is kind of what it looks like. We're going to go through actually each one later uh, when I could show it physically and show you, you know, click on it and show you what it actually is. So. Uh, again, this is a reference tab, so just going through the top, going through tab by tab, um, you know, we're going to put things like uh, area. So if you wanted to be really specific, maybe you had two areas of the plant, maybe you had inside battery limits, outside battery limits, you could be creative and, and you know, name the areas here. And then that way, when you're setting up your circuits, you could kind of split it up by area in your reports. Uh, fluid. Um, you know, if you're designing something special, uh, maybe a bitumen, six oil, maybe caustic, uh, you can select those. We have a bunch of predefined uh, fluid settings in here. Um, typically, for the most part, we we kind of use air or, you know, even water is good. Um, but all those properties are pretty similar until you get into the heavy, heavy type stuff, you know, bitumen. Obviously, caustic, we're, we're concerned about overheating caustic. Uh, so, you know, that's that's a consideration when you see caustic. You know, I always tell my guys it's kind of throws up a red flag for us. But um, and then again, this is this is just added stuff. You don't need to use it, but you can put drawing numbers. Uh, and again, this is good for reporting. But, you know, the more time you spend in it, it just takes a lot of time to, to kind of populate these things. Uh, and then there's a the comment section. So actually in each uh, circuit or each line, you can go in and put put comments about what you're doing. Um, you know, maybe the customer raised the set point or raised the maintain temperatures. Uh, maybe you decided to change installations, you know, uh, that are different from the line list that was provided. Uh, so you could put comments and comments on each section. That way somebody coming behind you could, you know, actually know what you did. Um, you know, project settings again, I, I don't want to go too much into this. I'm going to actually show you that when we when we get a live a live view. Uh, but in that project settings is where you'd set your particular uh, cable types. So this is where you're going to get your your whole uh, you know book of of cables that you want to use. So you can see here that just kind of defaulted is is you know our BTV, QTV, XTV, VPL, and KTV cable. Uh, and then when you get in our series cables, you got X and Y's, uh, SC cable. Um, and so this is where you would select those things. So you know, if you wanted to block somebody from using it or you just wanted to select a particular cable, you could come in here and, you know, unclick the ones you don't think you need. Um, for the most part, you'll leave them all selected because we have uh, when you calculate just a circuit, it kind of trace calco kind of automatically pick a cable for you based on the properties that you're you're putting in just your design parameters. So, you know, you really wouldn't want to restrict your, your build material here. Um, but, you know, and you, you can come or add things or subtract things, uh, keep them simple. So you can see components. You can do the same for all of these, but these things will affect what your program picks. Um, on the design parameters, most of these are defaulted um, kind of values, um, and some of them are for for labels. You know, you put on the pipe to identify that a line is is electric traced. Uh, so you can set your 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 ETL labels uh, at a certain interval. We typically do 10 feet. Uh, spiraling is just, you know, if you're spiraling around a, a pipe and it's not a one to one pipe ratio, you could set that here. Um, we, we don't practice spiraling um, so much just because it's not construction friendly. It's not uh, maintenance friendly when you're spiraling on the cable around the pipe. So um, so that's something we don't typically do. I know it's, you know, some places use it or like it. Um, and a lot of times we just have to revert back to the plant spec that we're we're you know building the circuits for. 
uh, spacer heating, a bunch of default values. This one, this one is a big one that we change. Uh, termination allowance is the amount of cable in trace calc that it gives you to terminate a power box or an in seal. So you can see this is defaulted for three. Um, in our specs, we use three foot above a six inch pipe. So the reason being is if you're installing cable on, on the bottom of the pipe, the power box is usually mounted on top. So you've got to get across that you know, circumference of the pipe to get up to your power box. So it, it leaves you a little extra cable uh, to terminate, to strip back, to pull out your bus wires to, to be able to terminate that cable. So, um, you know, anything smaller than six inch pipe, we usually kind of use two foot. So you can adjust this. Sometimes we even kind of manually calculate our heater lengths and we'll set this to zero. Uh, and then this is another big one we use a lot. You know, this is per IEEE 515, you know, we, we want to load our breakers up to 80% of our startup values uh, of our circuits. But in some cases, you know, if you need to go a little bit over, uh, instead of increasing breaker size, maybe you can go to 80, 85% or, you know, if your breaker's rated for 100% uh, startup, then we can actually go and increase that. And what this does is it'll actually give you more circuit length in your cable. So bear with me. I know it's it's kind of monotone and it's kind of generic, but uh, it'll get funner. Um, so again, going through the tabs, this is where we'd set up area classes, uh, you know, zones, divisions, uh, our dust groups, group A, you know, through D. Um, these are really important because uh, different area classes uh, defines the way that the sheet temperature and all those things are calculated. So, you know, make sure um, Make sure you're, you're selecting, you know, what what represents the, the circuit you're building. Um, here we've got a generic, you know, T rating. Um, so you can go and if you know your your electrical rating of the tire air is a T2, T3, whatever it is, you can kind of select that select that here. Uh, sometimes you don't know that or it's not classified that way. Um, sometimes we actually go to, you know, what product is in the area. Um, and let's say it's asphalt. So we'll say it's it's asphalt. That's the lowest auto ignition temperature rating. Uh, so we can go select this and actually put a temperature of the product of the lowest uh, auto ignition temperature product in the area. Um, and again, these are significant because especially when we're designing our series cable, our sheet temperatures can go you know above these ratings. So there's a potential for ignition, uh, especially if you're in a class one div two area group D. You know. Um, we, we're, our sheet temperature could ignite a product. So th these things get really important um, when you're designing our series cables. Uh, here's the sheet tip calculations. Stabilized design just means that, you know, we're, we've got some kind of controls um, and we know that it's not going to be in a runaway condition. Um, you know, uh, we've seen customers that, you know, wire up a, a plug to a, a power box and plug it in a, in a, in a breaker, you know, so. Um, you know, obviously that's not not what we want. So in this case, we you know we're telling we're telling the software that it has some kind of controls, and then this this box right here, use control limited, um, is is telling us there's actually an RTD on the pipe or some kind of temperature sensor that's sensing the temperature of that pipe. Um, and when we control limit, it usually goes this set point will be usually about five degrees above what our maintained temperature is. Uh, so if we're trying to maintain 120 degrees F on a pipe, this control limit to set point would be 125 F. And that being um, the reason behind that extra five degrees is because our controls are usually set to a dead band setting. Um, and those are, are typically five degrees. So that's where that extra five degrees comes in is the, the way our controllers work. Um, again, going through heater tabs, this category is, is really important. Um, we've got parallel heating cables. He heating cables, those cover our uh, BTV cables, QTV, XTV, um, and VPL, which is our power eliminated cable. Uh, so this kind of tells us what class of heater we want to use. Um, we've also got um, series cables, uh, which you know, will be our MI and our SC cable. Uh, and then the conductors are, you know, mainly when you're use, using series, we can have single conductor cables. Um, we can have, you know, two conductor cables and then we can have, you know, three conductor kind of three phase cables. So that's kind of where you would select this. Um, these are kind of all defaulted, you know, to something when you're actually um, setting this up. So unless you're getting into any special designs, 
Um, maybe you're trying to force a trace ratio, which tells you how many passes of cable you need on your pipe. Um, you know, you would come in and you could actually force the program to, you know, to, to use what you're telling it to do. Uh, and then families, you know, you'll see a drop down here. When I click this, I had a drop down of all our different families and cables. Uh, and then this jacket and stuff is for, for uh, MI cables. Um, components tab, you know, again, trace calc will default whichever cable it chooses. It'll pretty much default to the components you need. Uh, but just in the case of special components, maybe your customers require a lighted end seal, um, maybe a, a lighted power box or, you know, some special component that they want. Um, you can actually go in and manually select uh, from a bill of material what you want uh, your circuit to, to have. So this is where you do it. Um, and you can see power and end seal um, would be what, what's on the parent line. You know, if you set up any segments uh, on that parent line that showed splices and T's, these would actually be bold black as well. Right now you can see they're grayed out. So that would just be telling us our circuit doesn't have any splice or T connections. Uh, and then last but not least is the control tabs. Uh, and this is where we get into what, what kind of controls are we going to have? Are we, you know, talking about a thermostat, a mechanical thermostat that we're going to wire to a breaker? Um, and, and, you know, have a uh, just a, a, a basic control knob or, or are we going to have electronic controls? Um, or are we going to have a freeze protection circuit where, you know, we just tell them the whole panel to turn on or turn off? Uh, and this is where we would select that control method. So, again, this is, this is important um, in the sense that if you're designing a control limited circuit, uh, we want to have the right controls. Uh, and then again, these are default or overrides, so we can we can go in and say, yes, this is a local panel that's going to be next to the, the circuit that we're designing. Um, maybe it's a big cabinet with 40 circuits in it and, you know, all the circuits in the field, we have to run power back to that central cabinet. So this would be a, a centralized control, which which is this. Uh, the different types of RTDs and things we have, you can go in. And again, our program is going to default to what's correct, um, but this would be where you would modify your bill of materials. So if you want, you know, special components or special things, this is this is how you would get your bill of material to fall right. Uh, and then the bottom screen, uh, which would be the most important thing that we're, you know, concerned with, is you know this gives you all the values. So once once we get all our design parameters, we input them in, we build our circuits. Uh, this is kind of give us our results. So um, you can see right here we've got an OK um, and that's telling us that we've got a good design. Um, if you had a bad design or, you know, they couldn't find a calculation, you'll see it'll give you some error codes and I'll kind of show you those a little later. It'll show you some error codes telling you that something's wrong and, you know, you need to check. So there are some checks and balances built into the software to kind of keep you on track. Um, you know, to kind of keep you from from a bad design, so to speak. Um, but you can see once all our parameters are put in, it kind of gives you a total heat loss. Uh, here's that terminations we were talking about in the project setups. Uh, so you can see it was defaulted at six feet and you can see it show up here. So all of these things together uh, will kind of give you your total cable length. So it's these things that are together giving you total circuit length. Um, here's the cable it picked um, and the power output of the cable. This is telling you trace ratios and how many circuits you have based on that footage. Uh, sheath temperatures. Most of our self reg uh, cables have, you know, T ratings already kind of factored in. So um, what that tells us is by using a BTB cable, it's going to automatically come in under a T3 rating. Uh, so they're kind of default of that rating. So it's kind of an unconditional rating uh, that we can also base our designs on. So this is actually a calculated sheath temperature. Um, but that's just based on the on the rating of the cable. Um, important things, max circuit length. Um, you know, max circuit lengths of the different types of cable tell you how far you can run that cable on a particular pipe. So, you know, if you got a thousand foot of pipe, uh, this max circuit length is shown 270. You know, we could do some quick math and say we're probably going to need about four circuits. Um, you know, so that's really important in, in how you're setting up your, your piping and how you're designing. Um, again, you can, and I'll show you an example, you can actually go and put a thousand feet and, you know, it'll kind of spit out what the, what the circuits are and it'll give you a cable set quantity here and it'll show you, you know, four, four circuits. Um, 
minimum control, max uncontrol. This is kind of based on where you put in your RTDs, but um, this kind of gives you an idea of, of what, uh, what you can expect. Um, in this case, this is probably a freeze protection circuit, um, and you can see it's probably set at 40. You have to turn on or turn off. Uh, and this would be an uncontrolled pipe. So this right here is a little misleading, and I, I don't really like it a whole lot, um, but it, it is kind of a worst case scenario. So, you know, when we're looking, a lot of times we'll have a product that customers don't want to overheat, and they'll come in and say, hey, you know, we cannot exceed the 200 degrees F. You know, we'll run the calcs and there, there's an uncontrolled, you know, pipe temperature that come up. Uh, the problem with the uncontrolled pipe is as engineers, we build a lot of um, fluff. We build a lot of safety factors in our in our software and in our calculations. Uh, it's just what kind of what engineers do. Right. So, you know, in this case, we've got safety factors of 25 percent. Um, and, you know, these numbers are assuming that uncontrolled pipe is assuming a worst case scenario. So that's assuming that there's no wind outside. Um, it's a it's a max ambient day, uh, which would be 104 uh, is what we typically use. Our controls, you know, electronic controls would have to fail on, which they're programmed to fail off. Our RTDs would have to fail in the field. Um, you know, we'd have to have 110 percent over voltage. Um, so, you know, th those things all have to come. It's a, it's a perfect, um, you know, doomsday scenario is what I like to call it, uh, to get this number. Uh, but again, it, it is a, it is a number, uh, you know, to make, make the customers feel good that we're not going to exceed what they're expecting. So, and then again, you got contact temp. So this is, you know, based on some of the, the, the lower rated temperature pipes, you would see a contact temp temperature, which is where the, uh, heat tracing actually touches the pipe. Um, this is probably the most important part and, and things you'll get from customers. Um, you know, a lot of times they're trying to do their electrical bids and all these things, and, and they're just trying to trying to determine what the total loads are going to be for, for the heat tracing, how many circuits, um, you know, they're looking for branch breakers, you know, what sizes, they want to start planning power distribution, those kind of things. So, um, you know, once we calculate, we'll we'll set up all our circuits. These these things will give you you know total loads and and startups and steady states. Um, and so this is this is really important um, in the calcs. And you know we can do a nice report that gives you all this data uh, up front once it's set up. So this is this is what I was talking about. Um, you know, there, there's kind of errors that are built in. So, you know, it's saying if TraceCal Pro cannot find a solution to the inner, inner parameters, um, it doesn't meet the criteria, you will get a warning. So uh, these are kind of a list of, of common things we see. You know, it'll say max circuit, which maybe you have it uh, set up as a 20 amp breaker, um, but you put in a thousand feet of pipe. So, you know, it's just saying that, hey, you're exceeding this max circuit length. You know, we need to split it up in smaller um, pieces. Uh, max control temperature exceeds max allowable. So when we're putting in our parameters, there's an, a max allowable temperature. And that's, you know, the max temperature of a process of, of what the what the unit is running. Um, so if we, you know, if our max control exceeds that, you'll get a warning. So, you know, it kind of tells you to go double check your, your max allowable temperatures. Uh, and then heater sheet temperatures uh, make it may exceed the insulation. So Obviously, certain certain insulations are rated for certain temperatures. Um, you know, most of them are high for heat tracing. Um, things like fiberglass, uh, expanded perlite, those have a pretty high, um, you know, exposure temp. You know, 700, 800 degrees F. Uh, one of them I could think of that comes to to mind is uh, polyiso, um, and polyiso you you know has a pretty low um, max. Uh, uh, temp, which is like in the 400 F. So, you, you know, we'll get a lot of warning errors when we design with poly ISO, uh, just because our, our some of our, our sheet temperatures can get above that 400. So. So here we, here we talk about how we're starting to think about how we want to design our circuit. So, you know, this may be a set of piping we have. So, you know, we, we start talking about zoning uh, or actually circuit placement, how, how we're going to circuit this. So, you know, in this case, um, let, let's assume this is a freeze protection circuit. You know, we just want the all the circuits to come on at one time. Um, you know, we could all put these branches on on one on one breaker basically. If if we have enough circuit length, um, then we can put this on because literally it's going to turn on and turn off. 
Um, if we've got process control where, you know, the customer wants to maintain, uh, say, 120F, you know, then we start, we want more precise control. So we'll, we'll start breaking off some of these branch, branch piping uh, into single circuits. And what it does is we allow for an RTD at these points and we can get better control over each segment. And again, that's important because if we're flowing, um, you know, if we're flowing, looks like the arrows are going this way. If we're flowing here, uh, this circuit would be off, right? Because the, the process is flowing, but these are going to be cold. So we'd want this circuit to turn on. We'd want this circuit to turn on. So that's the important. That way, when the customer is ready to flow through these pipes, our, our temperature is what it says it's going to be. It's going to be 120 F and they can flow uh, versus these things cooling off and, and plugging. So, um, you know, it's just understanding the process, understanding what you're trying to do is, is how you start breaking these things down and how, how you build them in trace calc. So here's a here's a pre kind of a pre, you know, done uh, example uh, that I'm going to click through and then, you know, hopefully we can get through this and do some some real applications. Um, but this is some of the information. So this this would come from the customer. You know, they, they're telling you to have a pipe that's 400 feet long. It's six inch diameters. So it's a metallic pipe. Um, you know, plant spec calls for two inch uh, calcium silicate. They want to maintain 50 degrees F. Uh, it's going to be a ambient sensed, which means it's just sensing air and, you know, it's a, it's a freeze protection type circuit. Um, startup is at minus 20, which is going to be in a cold environment. Um, and then here's our T, you know, kind of conditional T rating of that area, which is a T2 uh, and then no heat sinks. So here, here we start building a um, building a circuit. Um, let's see. I have this set up. So we can kind of follow our parameters. I don't know if we can do this. I don't know. It's taking up too much. All right. So anyway, so we put in our parameters. So here's our six inch pipe. Uh, we've got six inch diameters, uh, 450 feet long. It's a two inch calcium silicate. So we, we're inputting these values. Maintains 50 minimum ambience minus 20. Um, it didn't give us any. Um, heater exposures and it didn't give us any max pipe operating. Um, so in those cases, you know, what we we'll usually do is default to whatever cable we think. And so let me back up a little bit. Let's talk about cable. Um, I'm, I'm going to get off the subject a little bit, but you know, the, this software we're using is, is not, you know, you need to understand what you're trying to do and you should have expectations to what cable this this software is going to choose. So I, I always tell my guys it's a, it's a gut feeling you have, you know, uh, you know, if I'm adding one plus one and I get 100, you know, there's something in your gut tells you it's just not right. And, and it's kind of this. So, you know, what you need to kind of know is is what the products are, what the products are rated for temperature wise. Uh, and the importance of that is, is if we put a a BTV cable that's rated for 150 degrees on a 300 degree pipe, um, you know, you can, yeah, you know, obviously it's going to melt the cable. Uh, it's going to damage the the uh, self-regulating polymers inside. Um, and, you know, eventually the, the output of the cable is going to go to zero, you know, so not necessarily going to melt or catch on fire, but the, the polymers inside is, is what's going to be damaged. So, um, you know, when I see when I see those design parameters, um, in my mind, I already have kind of an idea uh, of what cable that I think that the TraceCalc software should be um, should be designing or or should be um, you know uh, picking or choosing. What I won't know is I don't necessarily know the heat loss uh, of what the circuit's going to be, um, so I won't know what the output is, the tens, fifteens, uh, five watts per foot, whatever it is. Um, but you know. When I see that 140, I know that my BTV cable is rated for that. So it's it's just really good to have a sense of what um, what those ratings are. So I'm, I'm going to pull in. I kind of I kind of put this together um, just to show you guys kind of what our cables are and what they're rated for. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in. So what we've got here is we've got you know kind of a list of of uh, of our cables uh, and kind of what they're rated for. So you can see starting with BTV, this is kind of what we call our freeze protection stuff. It's going to be mostly for water, uh, safety showers, uh, even caustic. We use our BTV cable. So you can see it's kind of a, 
Uh, max maintain is 150. Max intermittent exposure is 185. So intermittent is, uh, you know, exposed up to 100 hours is how we define it um, at 185. So it, this cable can withstand up to 185. So this may be a, a low steam out condition or maybe an upset in the uh, in the temperature process in, in the process. Um, so you go to a higher rated cable, our QTDR, and now we're getting into the 225 range uh, and maximum intermittent exposure is at 225. XTV, which is our probably our most common uh, cable type we use, uh, maintain temperatures at 250, and you can see now we're getting we're getting pretty good uh, with our upset temperatures. So here's in, uh, intermittent exposures again, less than 100 hours over the life of the cable um, at 482 that this cable can see. Uh, a KTV is, is a little bit better maintained, but about the same exposure. Um, and then you get down into our, our VPL cable. VPL is a little different animal uh, than our self red cable. Um, VPL, but it has good exposures, right? So um, power off, it can see 500 degrees F. Um, and with our VPL cable, it kind of changes on the output. The lower the output, the higher it'll be rated for. Um, but you get up in our 20 VPL cables and they, they get in the 300 range. So a little bit above XTV, um, kind of closer to the KTV and what they're, what they're capable of handling. So um, again, the reason why I kind of jumped places is because, you know, in my mind before we, you know, just kind of put a bunch of numbers in the trace calc uh, and expect it to spit out a value, I kind of know what that value is. I kind of know what to expect. And again, what I don't know is I don't know what that heat loss is and I won't know what this, this output is. But when you think about it, we've got a 10 watt per foot BTV cable. We've got a 10 watt per foot QTV cable. We've got a 10 watt per foot XTV cable. We've got a 10 watt per foot VPL cable. And we can make a 10 watt per foot uh, MI cable. So obviously you can see we've got all the same outputs, um, but you know what what helps us choose the cable is the actual cable rating itself. Okay. Um, so what happened is, is in this particular uh, example, when we put in our 450 feet, just total length, you can see that the, the program kind of started helping us circuit these things. So maybe this is a straight pipe and, you know, it's a straight header or something that we're tracing. Uh, and you can see when we calculate it, it's OK, so we got a good, but you can see a note saying multiple circuits created. And that's because of the voltage we're using and it's because of the breaker size that we're using. And so, you know, based on uh, this type of cable and this breaker size, we're, we're able to run this 145 feet. So again, you take this 145 divided by 450, you know, and it's, it's kind of splitting it up for you. Um, so changing, you know, what, what's big about heat tracing is we're always trying to, um, you know, maximize or, or say minimize our, our designs, right? So, you know, we want to we want to be uh, as cost competitive as, as possible, but still have a, a good functioning system. Um, so, you know, we want to make sure our designs are optimized. So, you know, when you start getting into trace calc, you can start kind of playing with insulation type, um, you know, to change the output. Uh, or the heat loss of the cable, which actually, you know, helps us with outputs, those kind of things. So you can see uh, just by using uh, mineral wool, we reduced, reduced our circuits from four to two. And you can see it's because our, our uh, max circuit length increased from what was it, 145 to 247. So uh, again, if we want to optimize a little further, um, you know, we had 120, we were using 120 voltage. So now we jumped to 277. Obviously 277 allows us to run longer distances per circuit. Um, and so uh, again, we went from now, we got 450 feet on one circuit, 130 amp breaker uh, with 277 voltage. So, uh, and you can see now our max circuit length at 526. So, so these are the things sometimes we play with to, to optimize a, a heat trace system, uh, minimize circuits, and uh, I'll, I'll talk about power distribution and how significant it is a little bit later uh, in the in the uh, presentation. And just because it's so that's that's where most of the cost is for heat tracing is, is in the power distribution uh, and in the labor to install it. Right. So so these things are really critical. You know, when we're trying to save uh, money, we're trying to save a customer money. 
Um, sometimes your, your hands are kind of tied. Um, you know, certain plants call for certain uh, voltages. Um, you know, and, and you, your kind of hands are tied. If you're starting out a new design and you have a new transform, new panel, sometimes you can influence the customer into, into doing some of these things, you know, if you can show cost savings for them. Here's kind of our second example. Um, and it's uh, it's an example that we're going to use uh, MI cable. So, so again, my gut, I'm, I'm seeing these higher temperatures right here. We talked about exposure of our cable. Um, and I know that uh, the only cable we have that can see these kind of temperatures is our MI cable. So just not even knowing how many watts per foot or how long or anything, I, I know it's going to be our MI, right? Um, so here it is. We plugged in all the data. Uh, from that sheet, and here, here it is. Um, we've got no heaters found, exposure temperatures too high. And what's that telling us is we're, we have the wrong cable selected. So uh, in the box I showed you on the heater options, there's the, there's the option of a parallel or series cable. So we would basically, to fix that, um, you know, we need to move to that MI cable. So here it is. We would go change the category, the type of cables, um, and then, you know, in this example, we're, we're we're still getting we're still getting sheet temperatures too high. So uh, there's a number of tricks we use uh, to kind of bring that sheet temperature down. One of them is going from a 300 volt to a 600 volt. That's kind of a little bit um, more than I want to talk about today. But um, you know we're we're trying different things to get a design. So right now we you know we're we'd have to go tell the customer there's no design uh, if we just plugged in that values and walked away from it. But we know we can manipulate the, the software, manipulate the data um, and still get a good a good sound design uh, by doing that. So one way is we, we change cable types. Uh, now we talked about control limited designs, which is telling us there's a there's an RTD on the pipe. So we'll go select that limit, limit the control limited set point five degrees above our set point. Um, and now you can see it actually gave us a design. So just with a few tweaks, a few changes, you know, understanding how it works, we were able to come up with this design. Um, here's our trace ratio, so we can have three passes of cable on the pipe, and there's one circuit. Um, you know, and again, you know, here's things that you can do to minimize or optimize the the uh, circuit. Is you know, you can look at the output sheet temperatures. You know, we can force trace ratios. We can do a bunch of different things um, to kind of kind of make these designs work. Uh, in this case, a series series is just a weird animal, right? They, uh, you know, as we change the length of the cable because it's a series cable, um, the output of the cable changes versus our self red cable. It's it's a per foot, uh, you know, output rating. So I think I, I talked enough about this. I'm, I'm really ready to get into uh, our, our trace Calc software. So here's our trace Calc software. Uh, this is what the what the screen looks like uh, when you open it up, and we're going to start with a, a a new circuit. So again, it's all Windows based. You know, I have nothing here. I'm going to go select a new file. So here I am building the file. Is everybody still with me, Bill? You you there? Everybody's good. Yeah, oh, we're good. Okay. Good, all right. Good job. And it's, just bear with me. It's real boring. I, I understand, but we're, we're getting into the nuts and bolts now, so hopefully this will get a little bit more uh, entertaining. But uh, so here's here's our interface. Again, we've we've just saw these things. Um, so here's where we're going to build our circuit. Um, and in this case, we're not going to talk about vessels today, but you have you know here's the tools to you know figure out heat loss on on a vessel. Um, and this is pretty cool, and maybe may a topic of conversation later, but um we'll, we'll stick with the piping for now but again so when, when i'm approaching these circuits i I'm, i want to go uh kind of systematically you know I, I go from this field and i'll start going through every parameter um tab by tab and i, I kind of got a system that i use and and what it is is you want to make sure that you're not missing anything that you're not um selecting anything that's wrong um and that you're getting consistent designs so uh, it's just something I do, you know, if you, if you change a temperature here and you don't change it on the other circuit, then, you know, you have issues. So um, let's see if I can find, I had some kind of pre. So here's a, here's what we would typically get uh, from a customer. So th this is a sheet we have, we call it a basis for design. Um, you know, this may be an email, this could be a, a 
uh, maybe a field sketch of a, a piping you went out and sketched with footages and kind of data that you took from the plant. Um, but at a minimum, when we're trying to design a circuit, this is kind of what we use to, to give us our parameters. Um, and we've got, this is kind of a, I call it our light version. You know, we've actually, um, for some of our bigger jobs, we've got a much bigger basis for design. And you can see this thing is 12 pages. And it literally goes through, you know, every single parameter, what type of controls, transformers, uh, cable types, uh, all those things. So it's really, you know, more than you want to do on a, on a small little quick calculation job. But you can see 12 pages. So we, we kind of came up with a with a smaller, uh, more convenient type. And it just goes through basic stuff. What's your maintain temperature? What's the minimum ambient uh, process operating? What insulation? You know, sometimes the customer will say, hey, we want you to choose installations, but for the most part, there's going to be some kind of plant spec uh, in the different units that kind of tells us what to use. Um, they'll, they'll even call out, you know, uh, thicknesses of insulations, you know, six inches and under, two inch insulation, um, you know, six and above, we're going to two and a half, three, you know, different temperatures, different maintained temperatures, you'll jump to different insulations. So, so that's something that if you're not you know, given uh, as part of the design, you know, you can usually pull a plant spec and, and get that information from. Uh, again, voltage, you know, these are all the basic parameters that we kind of need to to design a circuit. So here I am, let's, I won't be able to keep them both on the screen, but this is kind of a basis that I went through and just, just kind of made some random uh, scenarios. So um, in this case, we've got a uh, carbon steel pipe. So here you go, here's my drop down I was talking about. So Here's our schedules, 40, uh, schedule 80. Here's copper. Um, stainless is another popular one. See, stainless uh, 10, stainless 40. Uh, and then here's our PVC. So sometimes you get water lines um, that you know people need to trace. And here's our PVC uh, option. So in this case, it's a, it's a stain, uh, carbon steel pipe. Um, I've got an eight inch diameter. So I'll come down and I'll select my eight inch pipe. Um, we've got 50 feet of pipe. So just come in here, put my 50 feet. And then here's valves and supports. So, you know, one of the most critical things, it kind of gets into design, but um, when we're considering heat loss in a, uh, on a circuit in a system, we've got to account for all the heat sinks. So different types of heat sinks are valves, you know, pipe supports, uh, flange pairs, and those things have different heat losses versus regular pipe. So we want to account for those heat losses in our design. And the way we account for those heat uh, sinks is by adding extra cable. Um, and so, you know, the customer tells you how many they are. Sometimes they'll give you a piping isometric where you go look at your piping isometric and you can go through and count the valves and the different sizes, whatever they are. Um, you count your pipe supports and this is where you would put those things in uh, to help, you know, help you get your your proper circuit length. Um, just again, I think most everybody has a, a decent, um, you know, heat tracing background and kind of understands um, what it is. But I was looking for, I've got an adder chart that we use um, that looks something like this. I'm sure you guys are familiar, maybe familiar with something, but so this is, this is our, what we call our standard adder chart. And what it does is it shows how much cable we need to add per heat sink. Um, so in this case, you can see here's the pipe size. So we're, we're looking at the eight inch pipe and we're showing valves. So we would add an extra seven feet of cable on that particular valve. Um, because it's it's a heat sink. In other words, we're going to lose extra heat at that point. So we're putting extra cable. So and it's kind of a breakdown that we use um, for our field guys. They use this as a as a rule of thumb in the field when they're when they're putting on this cable and installing it. So this is something we use a lot. We reference it a lot uh, in our designs. So again, we can go here. Um, there's different types of valves. Um, typically, what we use is a light valve, which is a 150 pound rated valve. Um, and then we'll show fixed adder, right, which just tell us there's a fixed amount of, of cable that it's put on it. Um, and then you can go in and put the, the quantity of those. So maybe the customer tells you there's two. Uh, maybe you looked at a piping isometric and you counted on the piping isometric, you know, how many valves there are. Um, 
in our particular example, uh, it showed uh, two valves and five pipe supports. So again, here's our pipe supports where we account for them. There's different types. There's hangers. Um, there's our typical shoe, which is just, you know, uh, kind of sometimes welded to the pipe and sitting on a, a fixed uh, beam or a, a pad. Um, and, and, you know, those are the ones we want to use. So in this case, there's uh, we'll, we'll use our typical typical shoe fixed adder. Um, and, you know, this is a eight inch pipe, so they're probably going to be, you know, usually about 10 feet apart. Um, and so we can go in and, and, um, and add that. Add that on there. All right. And so here's flanges um, and then you got a miscellaneous section here. So in the miscellaneous section, we can do some things that it's kind of at extra adders is the way to look at it. So we can allow a percentage of the pipe length. So in this case, we used 50, uh, 50 feet of pipe. And let's say you, you, you were out in the field and it's a sketch and you were eyeballing it and you're just not sure and you want to allow an extra 5%. Uh, an extra 10%, something you do maybe when you're quoting it just to make sure you, you're putting enough cable on it. So this is where you would add those percentages in. Um, you can allow lump sum watts. So maybe we're looking at a vessel um, where we're not getting watts per foot. We're getting a total heat loss of the vessel uh, and we want to allow lump sum watts. So we come in here and we're going to say, OK, I want to allow an, an extra 100 watts uh, of, of heat loss to, the, to my, my calculations. Uh, another thing, and this is probably the one we would use more than not, is a fixed, you know, length of cable. So I can say, hey, my design calls for 100 feet, but in my bill of material, I want to show 120 feet. So I can come in here and add that extra 20 feet of cable, um, and that it'll be accounted for in my bill of material. Uh, drinks and vent drains and vents. We don't typically. Um, show those in our in our heat losses, and but what we do is we need to account for them because we need to trace them. Uh, and that's kind of a default value. A drain and vent, we just assume it's a foot. It's, it's kind of what we do. You know, it's going to be a smaller bull pipe, probably half inch, three quarter, depending on what your main header is. And, and there's a certain allowable um, quantity of, of cable we're going to use. So in this case, again, if you had a piping isometric or something, you can go and count how many drains and vents you have, and you could add those in there. Um, so there's our valves and supports. Next is insulation. So here's where we're going to choose the type of insulation we're using. Um, in this particular case, the customer told us calcium silicate. And you can see here's our drop down menu. We've got a bunch of kind of pre uh, determined values. And what these values are, you know, they're based on AT, uh, ASTM calculations. So you can go and, and see uh, the insulation properties. So this is going to give you your K factors, your specific heat, all the things. Um, you know, sometimes you can go and, and get a, um, a uh, cut sheet of the specific type of insulation you're using. Um, you know, even mineral wool, there's two or three different manufacturers and, and maybe, you know, the different processes have different parameters uh, for how they make it. So, um, you know, if you needed to set up one, you could, but these are kind of defaulted values that we use. So uh, just like setting up a pipe type, you'd come here, um, you know, and you could add, add an insulation and then pull the cut sheets and you can add it yourself, um, you know, if, if you don't see anything in here. But for the most part, we've got a pretty good uh, selection of insulations that you can choose from. Uh, so in this case, the, the customer's choosing cell glass. Uh, so we'll choose this one, which is our newest one, uh, 2015, and it's, it's our pipe, so it's type two. All right. Cell glass. All right, then when, here's our thickness. So uh, customer you know, from our cut sheet, it shows three inch insulation. So here's where we put that thickness. The advanced tab on insulation is if you were doing a, a two layer insulation system, um, you know, maybe you've got uh, some kind of internal mineral wool or something and on the outer layer you're putting cell glass or something or, um, you know, vice versa. This is where you would come in. You could show, you know, the two different insulations. So here's our inner layer. And then we can put our auto layer here. Um, again, don't see many, uh, you know, simple calculations with this. this these are getting more uh, technical when you're using two-layer systems. But just know that the software has the capability for those things. 
Um, this one right here is pretty critical uh, in, in your calculations. So uh, oversized and insulation. So, you know, when we say oversized, we've got, you know, uh, an eight inch pipe. So the way to think about it is these things are two, say, half shells uh, or, or clam shells, we'll call them, and they kind of fit over the pipe. So, you know, when we're putting heat trace cable on that pipe, we've got to kind of account for that thickness of the cable. Um, so our our insulation won't fit uh, perfectly um, if we if we have the same diameter insulation as we have uh, pipe. So what we do is we call that oversizing, where we oversize the insulation. And you know there's different charts. I'll show you the chart I use. Um, but you know you come in and you select a nine inch. So that inner circumference of the uh, insulation that we're going to install is nine inch, and that extra inch between the insulation and the pipe wall gives us that space to put that cable. Uh, and that way we get a good, nice, even fit clamshell that closes together. You know, when we put the two halves together, there's not a crack in it because of the thickness of the, of the cable. So, um, and not only that, but plan for placement of cable, um, you know, this, this number also affects your, your heat loss. So, you know, that extra inch between the wall of the insulation and the pipe is is basically an air pocket and believe it or not air is a is a is a really good insulator so um you know we account for that air in those calculations so you know if you leave this out um you know and don't oversize then you know it, it could affect your calculations you could have a lower wattage cable than you need um and and when i say oversize i'm talking about uh insulations that you know are, are hard, hard insulations. So uh, you can see this is an old chart I just keep by my desk, uh, just for quick reference. Um, and I've kind of got all the, the uh, insulations listed out. So here's our cell glass, uh, kind of gives me my K factors and my uh, temperature exposures that we talked about earlier. And you can see here's the texture. So these are rigid, which means that they, you know, you, they won't bend. In other words, to fit, if you are that uh, insulation the same thickness as your pipe, you'd have to start coping out insulation to, to give a gap for your cable to fit. And obviously you don't want to do that because it takes a lot of labor uh, to cut a channel and insulation to fit your cable. Um, so, you know, that's that's why we account for that that over oversizing. So you can see some of these things um, uh, don't need our, our soft or flexible fiberglass. We don't need to oversize. Uh, mineral wool, mineral fiber, rock wool, those things we don't need to oversize. Um, but this is kind of a chart I use. And here's our oversized values. Um, so we were at eight inch. So you can see I want to oversize from eight to nine. Um, and, and that's going to give me an inch air pocket uh, along that pipe. All right. So uh, again, going back to our, our customer parameters, uh, he wants to maintain 200 degrees. Uh, his minimum ambient is 15, uh, which is kind of typical down south. Obviously, you guys up north will have, you know, a little bit colder or minimum ambient. This kind of tells us what the outside temperatures are, but it helps with our startup. So the colder the temperatures, the more startup, the bigger breakers we're going to need. So this is this is a really, really important parameter. Uh, max ambient, we just use 104. It's kind of a default uh, to 104. And if you look at that curve, it's kind of where, uh, you know, an outside temperature could only heat a pipe up so much. So um, we use 104, just kind of default. And and again, if you aren't sure of these, they're usually kind of declared in a pipe spec. I mean, a plant spec somewhere. So you can go usually pull these uh, from there. So max heater exposure. This is where we talked about, you know, this is really significant because this kind of determines the type of cable we want to select. Um, so. Uh, max ambient 104, heater exposure 200. So again, I'm thinking QTV, um, you know, possibly XTV, VPL, all of those cables would work because they're they're above the, the 200 degree rating. Max pipe operating, this is a process temperature. So this is something you'd get from the plant, um, you know, and it would tell you kind of what their, what their, uh, their max pipe operating temperatures are when they run their process. And then max allowable, so this is where you know, you want to get into the caustics where, you know, you're not going to exceed. You don't want to exceed 165 F, say, before it starts reacting. This is where you would kind of put those temperatures. What is the max allowable temperature uh, that the customers could see? Some products degrade when they're overheated. 
Um, so this is kind of where you'd put that. So if you're not giving it, I, I usually say kind of set it a little bit above the fault. Um, you know, if you are giving it, then use the values, obviously the customers. Sometimes you can pull these these this data from line lists. You know, you'll have a line list that shows your e, e, ET scope, what's what's scoped and what's not. And those things sometimes will give you insulation. Uh, they'll give you max exposures. They'll give you maintains. So a line list is a good place to look for this data. Uh, if you're just trying to do a quick design, again, I use the basis for design or some kind of email. You know that you would have to request this information. Again, uh, let's see. Our voltage uh, customers using 277, and they didn't didn't specify a breaker size. So just kind of designing. I'm just going to start. This is the default value. Uh, you know that that we'll use. Uh, go to my reference tab. So my area of fluid. I'm not going to define. Here's my location. Outdoor piping, indoor. Uh, the difference between these two selections is. Outdoor accommodates the wind uh, speeds uh, and we use 20. Again, if you look at a curve, it kind of flattens out at 20, 25 degrees uh, is where any any higher winds doesn't affect the heat loss. Indoors just literally takes out that that you know wind speed calculation. So um, that's that's where it's like that chemical exposure. You know, there's organics and organics. It, this again is defaulted. Just depends. You know, if you get that information, a lot of times we just don't have it. Here's our startup uh, temperature. So this is telling us that on a 15 degree day, um, we turn on the breaker and our heat trace is gonna work. So this is where you'd set that value, which is a little bit different from this minimum ambient, but they they are, they are do go hand in hand, uh, the minimum ambient and the startup. And then obviously here's our heat loss safety factor. So for the most part, IEEE 515 tells us that, you know, 25% is a good heat loss safety factor to abide by. Uh, sometimes in your freeze protection applications, you'll want to go a little less. Uh, so, you know, you really need to just get some heat on the pipe. So 10% is fine. Uh, in this case, we got 200 maintained. So uh, we're going to go to 25%. Here's our area classes. Uh, our customers telling us it's group one, div two, class one, div two, group D. Um, they are telling us it's a, um, We'll just use T1, which again, here's the drop down that I, I talked about earlier, 842. So here's all your different T ratings, uh, kind of unconditional. You can put that if the, if the unit's rated, has a T rating. Sometimes they're not, but I can get the lowest auto ignition temperature product that's in the area. And in that case, I could just come in and put a value in here, you know, whatever that is. So, and again, this is significant in uh, our, our series cable, our MI cable and our SC cable. Um, so by the way, this is, I'm using a actual, a test version of, uh, trace calc. So I'm actually, you know, helping find the bugs from, from our new, um, revision that's coming out. So if you see things like that, it's probably why I'm actually, this is a test version of trace calc that I'm using. So, um, but the, the, uh, the interface is everything's the same. Here's our stabilized control. Remember this tells us if we've got controls and what kind. Uh, if we want to get more specific where we have an RTD on the pipe, we can select our, our use control limited box. Um, and, you know, we could set again, it's going to default to what five degrees above whatever our. Whatever our set point is, so it's going to default to five degrees above this. If I select the control limited. So there it is. Uh, heater options. Again, we were talking about uh, different types. So if you put in your parameters, you don't get a design. It says, you know, heaters, sheet temperature is too high. This is where we come. Here's where we select parallel and heating in series. And what this does is it, it selects cables in this family over here. So you can see when I select series, I'm getting a different bill of material here. So here's all the different uh, MI cables that I can choose from. Again, once I select this, I don't really need to be specific. The software will help you choose a cable. So if you, again, this is manual selecting, so I'm going to enforce in, in a, a particular family of cables. For the most part, you guys are doing quick calcs, so I would just let it default and, and let, the, let the software pick cables. Again, these are, these are kind of uh, spiraling, which we don't 
particular you use. Uh, here's the felt warranted force trace ratio. So I want to say I, I want to have two passes of cable in this pipe. It's a big bore pipe. I want even coverage heat. I would force my trace ratio, but for the most part, you know, trace calc will uh, select that for you. Here's components again. Trace calc is going to default to the components based on the cable it chooses. But if you had a case where you wanted to select a certain type of power box with a, a signal light, or you want a lighted in seal and you want that to show up in your bill of material, you can force that here and manually select the power components. That way, when you run your bill of material, it'll be it'll be right. And then controls. Here's our control methods. We've got ambient, which would be external RTD sensing air. You've got line sensing, um, but doesn't have any failure alarm, so it won't alarm a panel uh, telling you it's it's uh, not working or it's above or below you know certain temperatures. Here's one uh, with an RTD on the line that's going to send back you know uh, uh, settings to our controls, and then this is an uncontrolled situation. Uh, and this would be the case I used a while ago where you, you know, wire a plug uh, to a to a power box and plug it in a plug it in a 110, 120 volt uh, power box and just kind of let it let it do its thing uh, with no controls. Uh, this is also a place where if a customer is asking you, hey, I want to know what the max temperature that this system is going to get to, like what is the max, you know, uncontrolled? And this is where I'd come, I'd get rid of all my controls and assume there's none. And I kind of showed you that earlier where it's going to give you that uncontrolled value here. So that's where it's going to come out. But remember, this is kind of, you know, something that it, it's just a doomsday scenario. It it never will happen because of all the fail safes your heat trace circuit's going to have in place. But, you know, again, it's a, it's a it's good to know uh, and it kind of helps our customers feel better to, to know we're not going to overheat their product or, you know, um, mess up the product, degrade the product, uh, so they'll ask for this uncontrolled. So this is this is where you would select basically getting rid of all controls. Um, and that's about it. So once we're there, uh, we're ready to calculate. So let's just call this. I'm going to rename it, uh, and I'll call it eight inch eight inch pipe. So you know, again, you can be really descriptive or how you want to lay it out. Uh, you can see it change. So this lightning bolt tells us that we need to calculate it. Uh, so you come up here and you press the, the calculate record. Um, and it'll go through a process. So I'm getting uh, errors already. You can see this is a warning. Uh, it's not a no design, but it's a warning. It's tell you something's something's a little off. And here's our here's our error. So just really quick, you can see it picked. Um, you know, MI cable, and that's that's because I had forced series here. So let me go back to parallel, and you can see I changed the parameter, so it needs to be recalculated. It knows something changed, and our design is not good anymore. So here's the lightning bolts. I'm going to go click it and get another design. So here we go. In this case, it chose 20 XDV cable. Um, you know, here's our power output, 14 watts a foot. This 8-inch pipe takes two passes of cable. Here's our trace ratio. And it's going to be one circuit. OK, here's the kind of the adder chart is what I'll call it. But here's our total cable length that it chose based on our footage. So you can you can see here's our pipe footage at 140. We put in two valve adders, which allowed an extra 14 feet of cable for our adders. We've got three supports, which threw in uh, 18 feet of cable and flanges. We didn't have any drains. We put two, which is the, the foot. Uh, that I talked about. Here's the adder, and here's miscellaneous. So this was that point where I actually went and added the extra cable. That was where we kind of selected, and, and I said, you know, hey, we want to add, you know, X amount of extra feet of cable, and and that's what, you know, in this case right here, this is our miscellaneous. So, you know, if this goes to zero, um, you know, again, we'll recalculate and you can see it'll go away. So now now our, our cable length shrunk. Here's our miscellaneous is now back to zero. Uh, and then here's our termination. So this is what you know they need to splice to actually fit in the power box. So here's our information. This is what most of the guys are worried about or are looking for. You're looking for total loads. So this particular load has 21. Um, 2.19 KW, which is 2000 watts or about uh, our operating circuit is seven. Our startup is 13.9. So really what we're designed to is we're designed to 13.9. So 
That's telling us on this minimum ambient day, a cold pipe, if we turned on this circuit or flipped the breaker, they, we will have an inrush of 13.9 amps. So after it comes up to heat, it, it kind of, it's almost an instantaneous, but it may take a few seconds for this 13.9 to start dropping. But once the pipe is starting to heat up, this is where it's going to kind of normalize to. This is what we'll call our steady state current. Um, so, you know, we don't want to design the steady state. Uh, so if we put this on a, on, you know, say a 10 amp breaker, uh, our inrush is going to see 13. So we'll, we'll trip this breaker just when we turn it on. Right. So, so these are kind of our design parameters right here. Um, and, you know, real, real important information. Uh, Hey, hey so, Chad, we're at, we're at about 10, 15 minute mark. To okay. Get, we get to noon to just to kind of keep you, keep you on. Yeah, track. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, I know this went long. So, okay. You know what? What? What you want to do is again, it's Windows based. Get the software. I encourage people to play around with it. it it's not going to break. You know, um, I, I tell all my new guys to just, you know, I call it playing. Right. Go change pipe diameters. Let, let's change and see what happens. You know. So. You know, obviously, you know, I expect if I go to a smaller pipe, you know, I'm going to expect my heat loss to go down significantly. And you can see, all right, it's back down to 14.42. So go change insulation types. We're trying to optimize and customers telling me, hey, I want you to recommend an insulation. Well, go go choose, you know, choose cell glass, choose mineral wool, choose, um, you know, poly iso, uh, you know, any other insulations. And, and here's where you play. Um, sometimes you can optimize the insulation thickness. So by increasing the ins insulation thickness, our heat loss is going to drop, which means we require lower wattage cable, which ultimately affects our power and how long our circuits can run. So, so these things are real critical. Uh, again, voltage, you know, going up to higher voltages, you got a long thousand foot line. We can trace that in one circuit sometimes if it's a straight header uh, by going to 480 volts uh, if that power is available. Uh, breaker sizes, again, the branch breakers that control these individual circuits. We typically design up to a 60 amp breaker, um, but some of our controls, it just depends on our controls. Uh, you know, we'll we use a 50 amp. And when I say controls, it's based on the, the rating of the electromagnetic relay or the solid state relay. Those have different ratings that we have the design to as well as the, the branch breaker sizes. But, you know, uh, here I'll put 20 amp, uh, 20 amp breaker. Um, and you can clearly see right here, max circuit length, because it's 480 volts, uh, went to uh, 666, right? If I go to a 30 amp breaker, calculate, or at 999, right? So going up, uh, putting it on a little bit bigger breaker, you know, we got an extra 333 feet out of our design. So again, go play, maintains. Uh, again, this is stuff you're going to get from your customer and just, I, again, methodical. I do tab by tab. That way I'm not missing a setting or doing anything. Um, one thing I want to show you is when you go to reports, um, we've got different reports that we can we can use. So this one is, is good for when a customer is asking for loads uh, and it's our electrical report. And you can see right here, it's telling us it's a single phase, uh, 40 volts, um, and our load is, is 1080. Uh, so 1080 watt load. Um, and you know, here's our, here's our branch breaker. That's going to be a 30 amp. So if I had five lines right here, our report would show you the five line totals. Um, we've got our bill of material, which is a, a big thing. So we go to bill of material and it's going to pull up, uh, the bill of material for that circuit. So if I had five lines, it would give you the total bill of material. If I had, you know, just one line, uh, we could pull up just that this that bill of material for that circuit. So here's the bill of material for current pipe. And there it is. That would be just for that branch circuit. Um, and again, it's all pre-populated. Here's our, our in seals, our JBSs. Here's the number of tags we need, the type of tape and the, and the number of tape, the side, the pipe straps to secure the JBS and the in seals. So all this is given to you. Um, if you need to change it or you want to add an item, you can do a quantity override and change those values. You know, if you're, if you're sending it to customer, maybe maybe you don't know if you need to splice the cable, you need to add a T in or something. Here's where I would modify those quantities. I can add items. Uh, what else real quick? I think that's it. We've got a couple of nice uh, what we call detail reports, and those are nice printouts uh, that we can give to our customers if they're asking specifics about what we use to design it. 
Um, and it's a whole report that comes up and it gives you really the nuts and bolts of everything you did. So here's all the data that we used. Um, it gives them all this information. So if they want to vet your design or they want to know, you know, why it's taking so much cable or what the properties are, you can get a lot of, a lot of good in, in, uh, information here. You can see the installation. It'll actually give you the temps of the inside, outside, uh, those things. So this is a the single line detail, good report uh, to use in a customer. So I think that's it for trace calc. I know we kind of rushed through it and, you know, I'm long winded, so I, I talked a lot, but uh, let's see if we can get through some other. I, I'd really like to get through some, some, um, uh, I'd really like to get through some of these other slides for you. I'm going to skip tracer links. So trace calc is, is an engine we use, but for quick calculations, we actually have uh, what we use for designs called tracer links. And the difference is, you know, trace calc is 2D uh, and tracer links is 3D. So, um, it, you know, it's a pretty cool tool that we can use to, to optimize power distribution. Um, and we actually take your files. We take a line list. We import it into tracer links. We take IDF and PCF files, which are, are piping isometric files that we can import directly into there and, and it'll pull it up a 3D model. And you can see here's all the properties from the line list. Uh, we've got insulation types. Here's all the segments of piping and it's taken from that bill of material on your piping isometric. So we're not, you know, there's no errors. There's no anything. If that piping isometric is wrong, then our, our, our design will be wrong. Um, but what's good about the software is we use it for power distribution. So we talked about, you know, power distribution being the most cost of the project. This is kind of a breakout. And you can see it's up to 22, 22% of the total project cost. So, you know, if we can minimize this power distribution, we can save the customer a lot of money um, in doing that. So, and some of the things we use are heat maps where we import all the data in. We see where the, where the main uh, portion of the heat tracing is uh, and we can start developing. So we know that this is a concentrated area heat trace. There's a few circuits out here. And what that does is helps us place our panels so that we can, you know, minimize power distribution, less runs, less wire, less conduit, less cable tray, all those things. Uh, and you can see by just by looking at our heat maps, we can start placing our panels. Um, you know, we can import model files, we can import cable trays, uh, and then you can start seeing how these things are. These are power boxes and we're replacing them. Uh, here's our panel and the, the cable tray. So we can do a lot of cool things in, in in uh, tracer links. This was a huge model, a job we did out in Russia, I believe. So you can see how, you know, this would get crazy. Uh, tens of thousands of circuits. Uh, we can import uh, equipment, 3D equipment. So, you know, that's mostly where the market's going these days. We get a lot of Navisworks models. We get a lot of a lot of pipe rack files, those type of things. So we can import all those things into our tracer links software. So uh, here's a, a area class that we can import in. Um, so we do have, you know, engineering headquarters all over the world, so we do work sharing. So, you know, even if we can't maybe get to it now, maybe our, our other office can. So, uh, how much time, Bill? What we got? Right at about, about five minutes. minutes. Five minutes. Yep. So, EHT installation and best practices. So, you know, everybody wants to know what, what can he do to keep the keep the the system going, right? Uh, preventive maintenance type of PM. So here's kind of a quick overview. So I'll go over the main ones we get. The main calls we get from customers are, you know, hey, the heat trace is not working. I need you to come out and check it. So we go out to the field and sometimes it's as simple as a breaker being turned off and the heat trace not coming on. You know, maybe they're doing some other work in the unit that they're turning circuits off and they just click the wrong breaker. So it could be that easy. Uh, sometimes you're getting ground faults. Uh, when we're getting ground faults, the first things we want to look at is we want to look at, you know, is the insulation integrity good? You know, did somebody come and cut insulation, maybe change out a section of it and cut our cable while they were changing that insulation? Um, second most is is water in the power boxes. You know, we get a lot of water that kind of gets in there over time. These seals dry up, you know, water will get in there. It'll start causing shark circuits, start tripping breakers. So. You know, a good a good place to start is at the power boxes. Make sure they're they're not um, that there's no water in them. Um, you know, make sure it's it's good and lugged. You know, lug the lugs are tight over time. Sometimes heat buildup can kind of 
shake those things things up, especially on high current applications where there's a lot of a lot of current flow. Um, and really, I think the biggest thing I can tell you guys is is insulation, insulation, insulation. Um, we could put a thousand watts per foot of heat on a pipe, and if we don't have insulation, then we cannot maintain anything. And I use an example of you know you're trying to heat your house and you've got the front door open and the back door open on your house so you could have a, a you know an amazing heater in your house but with your doors open you, you'll never ever heat it up and that's that's insulation and the majority of the things that we have trace calc is going to spit out the right cable in the right right watts per foot you know a customer is going to call and say hey this is not working it's not coming up to temp and 9.9 .9 out of 10 times as you go in the field and they're missing insulation on valves, they're missing insulation on uh, instruments and those kind of things. So, you know, a lot of times that's the first place to look uh, to troubleshoot why, why things aren't working. There are some other things you could do. You could make cables and all those things. Uh, this kind of goes into kind of placement and how you would put it on a pipe. So this is our self red cable um, and how you install it. Here's our glass tape that we use. Every foot we usually wrap it. Uh, most of our cable is installed on the bottom, you know, five o'clock position of the pipe. You can see it here. This is a cross section of the pipe. Here's our insulation. So this is kind of where we install it. Um, aluminum tape is just to give it a better, make sure the cable is, is completely touching the, uh, the pipe. Uh, I got two minutes left. I, I doubt if anybody has questions. I kind of ran through this, but uh, anything else, you know, I really let me show you this real quick uh, while I got two minutes left. I'll show you the website. So this is where you get trace calc from. Um, go to our website. It's inventthermal.com. Uh, you go to resources and then design tools and you can see right here. Here's trace calc pro. So you go. It's free software. You download it. Uh, you download it here. It's good for 30 days. If you input your email, they'll give you a free code to to it work forever, right? It's free. So I encourage you to go download it, you know, register, which means you give them your, your email address, you know, and um, you'll get a code and you put the code in and use use the software freely. Uh, we have another software, it's called TraceCalc Net, which is a web-based kind of service. So if you just want quick, easy calculations, you don't want to open TraceCalc, you can go to our uh, TraceCalc Net and here's the Here's the interface, and it's basically kind of the same thing. Um, you know, you can see just real easy. Here's temperatures, maintains all the same parameters that we talked about, but just in a, in a little bit better format, all under one tab, one place. And then you can, you know, you can see your results calculated, and it'll give you cable type and loss. So here's another, you know, if you remember anything from this, this, uh, this just training, this, this web uh, cast, you know, remember that. Just go to our, our, our uh, our website and and download trace calc uh, the other thing too uh, and i'm at 11 so uh, the other thing in trace calc itself there's a nice help menu so you know if you got questions about what the call outs are what the parameters are you can uh go to the help menu uh in trace calc and it'll it'll give you some pretty good information you know you can type in their searches and things you can do to find out if you're getting errors in your calculations and you don't know what they are you can go to this help menu and pull them up that way so guys i know it's it's boring stuff hopefully you got something out of it uh if there's anything any takeaways from this it's you know go download it and play with it figure it out uh, you know put in your parameters change parameters and see what it does and just just get comfortable using it. it's just a new software uh, it's really powerful and hopefully it helps you, uh, you know, select cable for customers, uh, get heat losses, get loads and, and breaker sizes and and values that way. You can size transformers, do everything once you got your loads calculated. So re really, really powerful tool. Uh, really enjoyed having everybody. Uh, hopefully, you know, again, nobody's sleeping, but 